Hey guys, in this video, we're going to be going through a step-by-step 16-bit -step MS-DOS assembly program. Uh, in the process, we will learn some elementary debugging commands and a little bit about um, the 8086's memory segmentation model. This program consists of only 15 lines of code. It's a simple hello world, hello world but we're going to be covering each line in depth. So without further ado, uh, let's begin. So over here in VS Code, I have my file. It's just named hello.asm. Uh, you can get the same file if you download the 8086 um, kind of package. And you're also going to need DOSBox. Um, it's pretty simple. There's tons of tutorials on how to actually download it, but I'll leave a link in the description for you guys as well. All right, so now we can actually begin. So the first line we want to look at is the dot model small directive. This is basically telling us uh, the memory segmentation model that our program is going to use. So in our case, when we specify small for our dot model, um, this is telling us that we're going to have one code segment and one data segment, each of which is 64 kilobytes in size. But why 64 kilobytes? It seems kind of like an arbitrary number. Well, what is 2 to the 16th power? It's about 64,000. So what this computer had was it had a 16-bit offset uh, for its for its uh, memory, for its addresses. So the 16-bit offset would correspond to about 64,000 possible bytes that it could take up. So that's where we get our 64 kilobytes. Okay, we also know that these segments, uh, the code segment and the data segment, occupy their own space in memory. In other words, they do not overlap. Uh, one interesting thing is that the stack segment and the data segment are overlapping, so I guess that saves a little bit of memory. And the last thing that's important to know about the small directive is that it sets our, it defaults our procedures rather to near. So normally we'd have to specify either this procedure is near or it is far. But in our case, we don't have to do that because we chose model small. And we'll get into what uh, near and far mean in just a second. So the 8086, the 8088, and the 80186 processors uh, were equipped with a 20-bit address bus, which allowed the programmer to access about one megabyte of memory, two to the 20th. Rather than having one continuous chunk of memory, they divided this one megabyte into different segments, some of, we, some of which we've already seen, including the data uh, and the code, or we've talked about. Um, there's also two that we haven't really hit on, which is the stack and the extra segment, but we'll get to those. So we can actually determine the physical address and memory for these segments by just executing our program in debug, which we already have done, and then typing in R. So you can see here, this, this outputs all of our registers. We have the AX, which is the accumulator, the BX, which is the base, the CX, which is the counter, the DX, the data, stack pointer, base pointer, source index, destination index, data segment, extra segment, stack segment, code segment, instruction pointer. And these are some of our CPU flags. So if we look at this data segment, it says that our data segment is located at 075A, our extra segment is at 075A, our stack segment is at 076A, and our code segment is at 077A. So each of these are occupying some of their a space in memory, some of which are kind of overlapping. Like you can see the uh, data segment and the extra segment have the same address, but you'll soon to realize that they actually don't. And the stack segment is at 076A. Right. So we can actually determine the physical memory address by taking this um, segment offset pair. Right, so this is actually telling us where it's at physically. First, we have the segment, which would be, in our case, 077A. We can look at that and see that that's the code segment, but then we're at offset E, the physical 
uh, memory address, what we'd have to do is we have to shift this first part, which is telling us the segment. So we'd have to shift 077A to the left one hexadecimal character, which in our case would be four bits. So we'd be left with 77A zero. And then what we'd want to do is we'd want to add the offset. So in our case, the offset is just E. So we'd have 77AE. Pretty simple, but that's telling us our physical uh, memory address rather than our segment offset pair. So now that we kind of understand how the physical memory of the 8086 was laid out, uh, we can hope to understand near versus far a little bit better. So the near directive indicates that a procedure is in the same memory segment as our enclosing segment. So in our case, we only have one code segment. So if we had another procedure, let's say uh, paint proc, and then just paint end procedure, by choosing small, we default our uh, memory model to having one code segment. So normally, if we didn't choose small, we could have multiple code segments, and we'd have to define procedures as near or far, depending on whether they were in the same code segment or not. So in our case, this distinction doesn't mean anything because there's only one code segment. We can't have a procedure that is outside of our one code segment. Okay, so hopefully, hopefully that makes sense. Because there's one code segment, we can't have procedures that are outside the code segment, and therefore near and far do not mean really anything to us. The next uh, line we're gonna cover is dot stack 200. Uh, this one's pretty straightforward. It's just telling us the size of our stack so that our program can kind of understand if any other parts of the program, such as the, the data segment, is actually clashing with our stack. And this also does another thing. It initializes our stack pointer over here, indicated by uh, SP to the value we have right here. So I actually need to recompile this program, seeing that it's 100 and over here at 200. So just so I can prove this, let's go over here, let's go and recompile link hello.object and then debug hello.exe and examine the register. And you can see that actually the stack pointer is at 200. So we have a stack of about 200 uh, bytes. Okay, so now we're gonna look at the that data. So this is basically just kind of defining our data segment. And in here, we can define some of the variables that our program will actually use. So the first one we have is message. And then we have DB, which stands for define bytes. And then we have our actual string. So uh, for DB, this is actually gonna give us a byte for each character in the string. So you can imagine, um, We'll actually see it in a second how it, it will actually see in a second uh, what it looks like in memory. But for each um, offset, there will be a character occupying it. Okay, so we'll 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 come back to that a little bit later. But now let's look at uh, the dot code. So the first thing we're going to do usually in our code segment is to find some procedures. In our case, we have the main procedure right here and proc. Or the paint procedure will actually delete that. We don't need that anymore. So we have our procedure, and a procedure is basically just like, kind of like a function in another programming language. It's somewhere our uh, instruction pointer will jump to where it can execute some more code. All right, so before we get to uh, these two lines right here, I want to first, or I guess these three, I want to first look at move into AH, 9H, and then int 21h. So over here at uh, stanislavs.org, which is a great um, kind of DOS assembly, uh, some great resources, um, we can see uh, this interrupt kind of a definition for it. So the first thing we know is that it takes in the AH register 09, which we can see from here. We're moving into the AH register 9. The next thing it takes is the ds and the dx are going to combine to give us a pointer to the string ending in dollar sign. So that's what we have right here, our string ending in dollar sign. 
uh, returns nothing. And it outputs the string to the standard output up to the dollar sign character. Okay, so we can see here that we actually need in the data segment, we need, or in the DS register, we need our data segment. And in the DX register, we need the offset to our string. So that's, that's uh, using that information, let's kind of backtrack and see now how this is working. So our first instruction is move into AX at data. This is basically loading into the AX register, the offset of memory of our data segment. Oddly enough, we can't directly load uh, into the DS register, which stands for data segment, uh, the data segment in memory. We have to go through an intermediary register, which in our case we chose as AX. And this is kind of a hardware limitation of the uh, 8086 rather than an assembly problem. There probably wasn't a way for these, uh, that the engineers of this system made to directly transfer a uh, data kind of address into uh, a segment register like this. Okay, so let's actually step through uh, the first two instructions in DOSBox and see uh, what's happening. So the command we're gonna be using for that is trace. So we can just type in T and you can see that our instruction moved to the next one. We updated some of our registers, right? We moved into the AX register 076A, which in our case was where our data segment was pointing to. So you can see here that um, 076A is actually our true data segment. It loaded in with a default of 075A, but that's not actually where our data segment is located at. It's 076A. So that's why this step is necessary. We actually need to load our data segment into the data segment register uh, because what the data segment register started with was incorrect. So we move into AX at data. Um, and you can see also another neat thing is look at our instruction pointer. It's at E. Now we go to this next instruction, which is um, right here. And you can see that uh, our instruction pointer, or you can see our physical address and memory, and then you can see our instruction pointer is actually matching that. So we can actually look at this um, by typing in dump. And you can see right now we're at 0788.11. So you can see 8ED8. You can see our actual um, instruction in memory. Um, and this is because we're in the code segment, obviously, 0788A, 0788A. But here you can see it's reading our instructions from this code segment. So it's telling us 8 by the um, hexadecimal AED8, which would be translated into some binary, uh, basically move DS AX is a mnemonic. So it's going to directly be translated into that uh, binary representation of this hexadecimal number. So let's continue to step through our program. We can actually kind of predict what the next instruction is by looking at 8D16. Um, I don't know what that stands for, but we can see, okay, 8D16002. So that's our next uh, instruction. It's LEA DX message. Uh, LEA stands for load effective register. And in our case, we provide it with um, what we specified in the data segment. So it's actually loading the uh, register or the, uh, sorry, loading the address of this message variable into our dx register and here we kind of get a hint at where our address is it's at an offset of 0200 so if we look inside of the data segment which we can do by once again typing d for dump and then let's look at uh where is the data segment at 076a and then specify this offset you can actually see our string in memory so this is uh, where it's located at. Okay, so let, let's uh, continue, one more trace. So now we're moving into the AH register 09. Let's move once again. 
you can see that our AH, our A high register updated to 09. And then we're calling our interrupt. And this is the interrupt to print the string. So we're not going to see that yet. We're going to now type proceed because we're inside of actually kind of a BIOS procedure right now. So we're going to type proceed and it's going to skip over all this BIOS until we get to our actual assembly. Okay. So our final instruction, or I guess pair of instructions right here, is move into A, A high, 4CH, and then in 21H. And we could look at the definition for this, um, this pair right over here. Um, it's the approved method of program termination. Um, restores the terminate, control break, and critical error exit addresses, flushes all buffers, frees memory, and returns to DOS via the termination handler address. So I'm not sure if that means anything to you guys. It doesn't really mean much to me, but I know that it's going to terminate our program for us. So let's step through our program and see what happens. So we moved into A high. You can see that that's set for CH. Now we're going to in, uh, execute in 21H. And that should bring us into a BIOS procedure. Step through this. This is all BIOS generated. This is, I guess, ending our program for us. And you can see here that our program's ended. So we can actually, we never really saw that string that it printed for us, but we can see it if we just execute the executable. There you go, hello world, perfect. Okay, so the last thing, I guess our last two instructions would be main NP and then end main. So main NP is kind of just ending our procedure. And then the final thing, end main, it sets the um, program start address to the procedure main. So the code segment instruction pointer pair it's going to set at uh, the main procedure so if we had another procedure and we said uh, paint proc paint and proc and then we specified main or end paint when we uh, booted up this program it would actually begin the instructions in the paint procedure. So that's what that end is telling us. We want to start in the main procedure. All right, so I hope you guys liked this video. Um, it was a lot of fun to make, learning about the old 8086 um, kind of assembly language uh, for these like MS-DOS systems. Um, I had a great time. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you want me to make more videos uh, like this covering um, 16-bit, you know, um, the 8086 and MS-DOS, uh, just let me know and I will uh, come out with those for you guys. Thank you.